This is what we're working with today. <laughs> books. I asked on Instagram a couple of days ago, what are some specific videos you guys would like to see from me this spring? And so many people said daily vlogs. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to film a daily vlog for you guys this week. Yesterday, I was like, today's the day. I'm going to film a daily vlog for them. I literally laid on my couch and listened to an entire audiobook yesterday because my period was trying to murder me. So I know you guys are wanting daily vlogs. No daily vlog this week because my uterus was unfortunately trying to kill me on the one day I'm like, let me film a daily vlog. It's so much I needed to do and I didn't do anything except listen to, what is it, The Princess Trap by Talia Hibbert? The entire audiobook. And then I like cried on my bathroom floor and like blacked out chapters 12 through 17. I don't even know what to call this video. I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram people putting the first book they read by an author and then their favorite book they read by an author. It's like people give them an author's name and they're like, oh, I read, say it's Emily Henry. They're like, oh, Emily Henry, the first book I read by her, Beach Read, my favorite book, Beach Read. I don't know if y'all have seen that trend going around, but I decided that I was gonna bring that to YouTube. So today's video, again, don't know what to name this, but it's gonna be first book and favorite book by 10 different popular authors. I feel like I'm finally getting in the space in my reading journey where I've read majority of the popular books, so I'm finally starting to branch out from just the popular authors. But with that branching out, I haven't read a ton of books by underrated authors from what I'd say. So today I'm just gonna be focusing on popular authors and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to branch out and do a video with a lot more variety with my authors. I guess we can start out with Emily Henry, even though I already said it. First book I read by Emily Henry, Beach Read. Favorite book by Emily Henry, Beach Read, Happy Place is a close second because that one made me a lot more emotional than Beach Read did, but there's something about Beach Read though. This was the first book that got me back into reading, so I just have an emotional attachment to this book. So first and favorite. This is also a signed copy that Taylor I talk about Taylor so much on my channel. Can you guys tell I love that girl? She got me this book. She got me a signed copy. Next up, we're gonna go with Allie Hazelwood. The first book that I ever read by Allie Hazelwood was The Love Hypothesis. I need to reread this book because I didn't even like it. <laughs> I gave it two and a half stars and that's because I wasn't into Allie Hazelwood yet. I just didn't get the STEM romance. I just, what? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I, she said galaxy leggings in this and I said, Galaxy Leggings, I just read Love on the Brain by her, and she said Galaxy Leggings, and I said, Galaxy Leggings, that's so quirky, but like, let's move on. Like, my perspective is changing. I need to reread this, because I didn't like it. My favorite by Allie Hazelwood is Love Theoretically. There is crack in this. I don't know what Allie put in this, what form of drug she put in this book, but this is genuinely like in my top 10 books. I love this book so much. I'm, I'm like not even kidding, I'm obsessed with it. I want it buried with me. Was this the second book that I ever read by Allie Hazelwood? I think this was the second book. Yeah, it was. And I didn't have high expectations going into it. This just came out this past like summer or something. I think I read it because I saw Eamon posting about it or someone posted a TikTok with an out of context quote and I was like, okay, fine, I'll give it another shot and I'll go into it with an open mind. And I didn't expect to like it. This was a five star read for me. Incredible. Sophie Lark. The first book that I ever read from Sophie Lark was Brutal Prince. This was my gateway into finding Sophie Lark. This entire series by her is mafia and it is very much classic mafia romance. Like when someone's like, hey, I wanna get into mafia romance, what do I read? I'm like, Brutal Birthright series, start with Brutal Prince. This is a good gateway into Sophie Lark and this is also a good gateway into mafia romance because it's mild, but there's also comedy intertwined in it. And it's just like, this is so good. It's like, it's so good. I found out about Brutal Prince because I saw a TikTok about the arranged marriage that happens in this book. Callum and Ada have to have an arranged marriage to like make sure the mafia families don't beef anymore and they're like, we have to bring the families together so we don't kill each other. I don't know, it was like really tense for no reason and I'm like, okay, whatever. On their wedding day, Ada does not want to get married to Callum. She finds out he's allergic to strawberries and not like, I'm gonna get a rash allergic, like I, where's my EpiPen allergic? And I saw a TikTok about how some girl named Ada ate strawberries before she had to kiss her future husband. So that, so that he would have to go to the hospital, like, uh, so that he would what? Have an allergic reaction? Duh. I was like, oh my God. 
this girl ate strawberries knowing her future husband was allergic to strawberries. What's the tea? I need to know. And so I picked it up. I was addicted to it. I read it so fast. My favorite book by Sophie Lark though, I think it's gonna be Broken Vow. This is like the fourth or the fifth book in the Brutal Birthright series. I was torn between this one and There Are No Saints. There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark is a dark romance. I mean, this is technically dark romance too. It's, it's interesting because I don't really consider this dark, but then I'm like, I think this guy kills somebody. So I think it is actually dark. <laughs> There Are No Saints is very dark though. I love that one too, but I ended up picking this one because I think it's because he's a cowboy. <laughs> and a bodyguard, and a bodyguard. He grew up as a like a little cowboy, rancher vibes, and hence the boots, and now he's a bodyguard. And he becomes this girl's bodyguard. <laughs> and then some point later in the book, when they're hiding from somebody, because some, I think somebody's trying to kill her, they have to go back to his family's land and like on his ranch. And she's like city girl, and he's like little country boy going back to his roots. And I was like, ah! Moving on, we have Talia Hibbert. The first book that I ever read by Talia Hibbert was Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I really liked this one. I was also torn between picking my favorite book by this author, and I thought it was this one, but after thinking about it a little bit more, I think it's actually Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which these are both a part of the same interconnected series. This is the first book in the Brown Sister series. This is the second book. They're just very well-written, inclusive, and giggly contemporary romance books? Rom-coms? I think that's what they are. I don't know. There was something about Red, the MMC in this one. Him getting on a motorcycle, like, did something to me. This one's Friends to Lovers. And this one is dislike to lovers. It's not enemies to lovers. They're just kind of, both of them are neighbors and they just don't, they're just not about each other. So it's not enemies to lovers, but they're just like, meh, I don't really like you. The other's like, I don't really like you. And I loved it. Shane Rose. The first book that I ever read by her, I DNF'd and I don't even remember the title. And I don't even remember why I DNF'd it. So technically this is the first one I finished by Shane Rose, Between Commitment and Betrayal. So this is just gonna be the first book that I ever read by this author. My favorite however, is the second book in the Center Connected series, Between Love and Loathing. Both of these, are these considered dark romances? Sometimes I get confused on what's dark romance and what's not. And that shouldn't be confusing, but I'm trying to think if they killed anybody <laughs> in these books. I don't think they did. No, I don't think they did. This one, Arranged Marriage. And you start the book and you're like, how are they gonna have an arranged marriage? Like, how is that gonna happen? And then you get a little bit further into the book and you're like, huh? This one was a little too chaotic towards the end. Very fun, but very, very chaotic. This one. I liked this one a lot. This one's fake dating and it follows the brother of the MMC from Between Commitment and Betrayal. I think the girl in Between Love and Loathing is this girl's half-sister, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes there's so many ties between books, I'm like, who who's related to who in what way? One of my favorite things in this book is Dom, the MMC, goes into this girl's apartment one day, or her house, I don't remember her living situation, and he's like, why do you have pictures of so many people on your wall but you don't have any pictures of you? She's like, oh, I don't know, I guess I'm always the person taking pictures of other people and no one ever really takes pictures of me. So from then on, in the most non-creepy way possible, he starts taking like pictures of her. And then later in the book, they're like hung all over his wall in the least creepy way possible. And this is like, this can come off very creepy, what I'm saying, like he took pictures of her and hung them on his wall in the least creepy way possible. He was like, no one ever takes pictures of her and she's beautiful, I'm gonna take pictures of her. Not in a creepy way. If you've ever been the friend that is always the one taking pictures of everybody, this, that was just really meaningful and sweet. Bryn Weaver, the first book that I ever read by Bryn Weaver, I believe it was Black Sheep or Marrow. I actually can't remember which one I read first. They're both dark romances. They're both serial killer romances. This one is about two serial killers and this one is about a serial killer and a professor. That's all you need to know. They're both so fun. But my favorite one by Bren Weaver, as we know, is Butcher and Blackbird. This is a dark romantic comedy about two serial killers who kill serial killers. I'm a broken record when it comes to this book because it is like a six out of five star read for me. I love it with my entire heart. I ended up getting the indie copy before it got traditionally published. So I have, where are the pictures at? I have a couple designs in mine that aren't in the new cover. 
Elsie Silver. The first book that I ever read by Elsie Silver was Off to the Races, and this is a part of her Gold Rush Ranch series, which is so underrated. It's so underrated. If you've read the Chestnut Spring series and you haven't read this one yet, what are you doing? And if you like cowboy romances or rancher romance, just like country romance, this is the first one I ever read by her. But my favorite, I actually pulled out two books for this because I'm feeling very, like, I don't know. At the moment, I've been rethinking my entire life decisions when it comes to Elsie Silver ranking. I don't know which one to pick between anymore. It used to be Heartless Supremacy. But recently, like, Theo... Theo's been doing something to me. This one is Single Dad Nanny. He's a rancher. Is he a rancher? Is he considered a rancher? Kate is so f***ing hot. This one, Theo's a bull rider. Accidental pregnancy. Another reason why I'm feeling torn between these books now is because I relate to Winter so much more than I relate to Willa. Winter becomes a bitch when she gets overwhelmed and overstimulated and I have never related to anything more than that. Sarah Adams. The first book that I read by Sarah Adams is this one. I know it's a part of the It Happened in Nashville series, but I don't remember, I don't remember the name of it. It's this one. It was all right. It was like a... It was on Kindle Unlimited. I randomly came across it one day back in my phase where I didn't get book recommendations from the internet. I just read whatever I found on Kindle Unlimited that sounded good. Dude, those were the days. And I need to go back to like doing that. But instead my TBR is so long because of watching TikToks and booktube. I don't remember much about this one. Brother's best friend. They kind of like snuck around for a while and wasn't anything memorable. My favorite by Sarah Adams though is Practice Makes Perfect, which I read about a month ago. This was that book where he was teaching her how to date and then they ended up fake dating. He's also a bodyguard for this girl's to-be sister-in-law and I thought it would be really cringy. It wasn't. I loved this book so much. Sarah Adams like did something in this where I was like, oh my god. What kind of spell are you putting on me? Why do I like this so much? Abby Jimenez. The first book that I ever read by Abby Jimenez, the Happily Ever After playlist. I loved this book so much. I loved it so much up until the last 75, 75? Up until the last 25%. Why was there such an intense miscommunication at the end of this book? Like it was genuinely, like the miscommunication was gut-wrenching because I was like, there's no need for this. This is like, too real, like this would happen in the real world. Why am I reading about it in a book? It, it, fix your shit, guys. Stop miscommunicating. That is the only reason why I think I knocked this book down to like 3.25 stars because of how bad the miscommunication was. Other than that, the way Abby Jimenez writes flirting is so good. Like the way they were flirting at the beginning of this, I was like, ah, I was giggling out loud. My favorite by Abby Jimenez. Yours truly, just read it last month. I loved it. This one also had miscommunication in it, but for some reason the miscommunication didn't bother me like it did in that one or in any other book. Anytime I read miscommunication, I'm like, what are we doing here? But the miscommunication in this, it made sense. It, it made sense for both characters because of their traumas, because of his anxiety and everything that was just going around. I was like, okay. I get it. Jacob is perfect in this book, like the most perfect MMC. And it was so enjoyable to read about like a, a little introverted MMC. Because I feel like most of the guys in the books that I'm reading, they're like outspoken, they don't have anxiety, and they're very extroverted. Whereas like, I just wanted to give him a hug. <laughs> he was just so adorable. I wanted to pinch him cheeks, give him a hug, and send him a picture of the fucking parking lot. If, you, if you've read it, then you know what I mean. And lastly, we have Mariana Zapata. The first book that I ever read by Mariana Zapata was From Luke Off With Love. And it was funny to start with this one because I would say this is a little bit different than most of her books, mostly because I feel like in a majority of Mariana Zapata books, the MMCs are the grumps. The FMC was the grump in this one. And the MMC was kind of like, I don't even describe Ivan. He wasn't like Golden Retriever-esque, but he was like, he had a little pep in his step which is nothing like the other ones that came after reading this. Cause I read this and then I read like, All Roads Lead Here, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, Colty, Wait For It. And I was like, why is every single guy an asshole? He called this girl Meatball as a nickname. I thought it was kind of cute. My favorite by Mariana Zapata. I don't have to say anything. If you follow me on Instagram, you know how obsessed I am with this book. 
I'm already planning a reread of it. I, I don't know what it is. This is like in my top three books. I'm not even, I don't know what it is. My previous favorite book by her was Colty. And then I did a reread of both. And this is clearly a winner. Dallas Walker is just so perfect. Like guys, I can't even explain it. The two main characters are neighbors. And like, we all know I just moved a couple months ago and I've been manifesting a Dallas Walker to like live near me. So far, no, that not in the cards for me. I don't have any hot neighbors, but I wish. Maybe one day. I still don't know what I'm gonna call this video. First and faves. And that's all for my first and faves. What the fuck? That sounds so bad. I need to, you'll see what I'm gonna name this video because that'll be the title of this video. But thanks for watching today's video. I will have a vlog coming for you guys next week, I promise. Once my uterus decides to stop killing me, I will stop rotting and will actually record my day. Sometimes I just like go non-verbal. So that, that, that doesn't work with like daily vlogs or vlogs in general. I love you guys. Thanks for watching today's video and I will see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.